All right, guys, when you need to evaluate logarithmic expressions, there's only really five different ways to be able to do it. So what I wanna do is explain to you these top five ways to evaluate logarithmic expressions. So therefore, when you need to do it on your own, you can just follow along with the one that I provide in this video. So to kind of give you just a, a quick little understanding of our logarithmic expressions, I think it's really, really important to remember the relationship between a logarithm and a exponential equation. So here's our logarithmic equation, log of b of x equals y. And again, a lot of times students are, they have under hard time understanding what is a logarithm? What does it mean? What does it represent? So that's why I like to use this relationship between your logarithm and the exponential equation. If I was to rewrite this in exponential form, it would look like this. So what that means is when we're looking at a logarithmic equation or a logarithm and I say b log base b of x is equal to y, what we're really looking for is b raised to the y power is going to give us our argument x. Now, let's go and see how we can use this relationship to help us evaluate some simple logarithms. Okay. So I don't wanna always take an expression and make it equal to an equation, but I think for just understanding this as a fundamental part, that's exactly what I wanna do. Because again, when we are evaluating, we are looking for a value. We are looking for what is the value of this expression. So let's set the value of this expression equal to a variable. Mm, let's choose x. So if I have log base two of 16 equal to x, again, what is that asking of us? And again, the easiest way I think for students to make a relationship of our logarithm is to use that relationship when it's in its exponential form. So if I were to rewrite this in exponential form, it's saying two raised to what number is going to equal a 16. So you say, well, two raised to the first power is two, two raised to the second power is four, two raised to the third power is eight, two raised to the fourth power is, ah, 16. So the answer is four. Okay. So now we have log base seven of a fraction one over 49. So again, this is sometimes confusing because now hopefully you recognize like seven, what was it again? Let's see, let's set this equal to X and say, all right, seven raised to what number is equal to one over a 49? That gets kind of confusing. How do I go from seven to a fraction? So now we can go ahead and maybe manipulate our one over 49 to make it look like seven over x, so therefore then I can use my inverse operations. So if I rewrite this as a seven x over to a 49 raised to the negative first power, now I wanna be able to say, can I rewrite these bases so they're exactly the same? Well, there's nothing real I can do with the seven, but can I rewrite a 49 as seven raised to a power? And hopefully you recognize I can rewrite that as a seven squared. So now by utilizing my one to one property, if I have seven raised to the X equals seven raised to the negative second, I can see that X is gonna to equal to a negative second power. So whenever you're thinking, whenever you see like some fractions, just think to go ahead and rewrite that with your negative powers. Okay, now again, in this case, we don't have a, a fraction in this case, but again, like if you're thinking about 25, 25 raised to what number is gonna equal five, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So again, let's rewrite it in our exponential form. Well, again, they don't have the same basis, so I cannot use my one-to-one -one property here. However, I do recognize I can rewrite a 25 as a five squared. Now, again, you can see that I can rewrite this as a five to the two X is equal to five. So now utilizing my one-to-one -one property, notice I can have this five, I can rewrite that as five raised to the first power. So therefore I have a two X is equal to a one, divide by two, divide by two, X is now equal to a one. I don't know why I ran out of space, but let's go ahead and work on our next one. So log base five of square root of five. All right, so what the heck do we do when we have a radical. Well, I think it's really, really important to recognize if we're gonna say this is going to be equal to X. Again, what we can do is look at this is let's rewrite this in our exponential form so we can see what this would be. I could rewrite this as a five raised to the X power is equal to, now rather than using the square root of five, I'm gonna rewrite that as a rational power, which would be five raised to the one half power. Now, hopefully you recognize, you can see I have the one to one property, x is gonna to equal to a one half. 
All right, let's get into the last example. But if you can basically follow what I'm doing for each of these four examples, you're basically almost all the way there. Okay. So this is number five. Sorry guys, I ran out of space. I did a really, really poor job of planning out this video. So we have five. And so this is gonna be log base three of one over four raised to the our fourth root of nine. And then that would be an X. So again, let's go ahead and rewrite these as our rational powers. A couple of things I'm gonna do though, rather than rewriting the fourth root, I'm gonna rewrite that as one fourth. So I can do three to the X is equal to now again, if I wanna put this in the numerator, that's gonna be a negative one fourth, right? If you have this in the denominator and you rewrite it now in the numerator, it's gonna be negative. And instead of rewriting this as a square root or a radical, I'm gonna rewrite it as a rational power. Okay, now again though, I don't have them to be the same bases, but I can rewrite a nine as a three squared. And now I can multiply this two times a negative one fourth is going to be a negative one half. And now you guys can see my one-to-one -one property works and I get x equals a negative one half.